What's up guys? So I've got another video for you. We are going to be talking about the update and the event that has just released this last weekend. I was going to make this video last night, but if you saw my junk stream, uh, yeah, we just got drunk and uh, after I ended the stream, went immediately to bed. So <laughs> did not have any time to make this video, but uh, it's early morning now and uh, let's do it. So uh, to keep the event simple, just go to your tone call and event. That's pretty much always how it'll be there. It's in the teleport interface as well, but you know, most people just go to event. The event itself is pretty simple. You just need to find Ash's Pokemon card. So if you talk to him, he kind of explains that a little bit. But all you really need to do is get some combat gear and come down here and kill Jogers. They're pretty easy to kill, even with, like, fresh stats. Obviously, fresh stats will be a little bit harder than, you know, an account like this. But uh, they do have a drops. So let me show you what the drops are. Monster. Jogger. So they have these drops right here, which some of the interesting things would be Runite Bolts, Half Keys, Wrath Runes. They have the Pokemon cards on their table, clues, uh, clues, and then they now drop Noted Herbs. This is the day after the event, and there was also a mini patch. I'll talk about that towards the end of this video, but, you know, just if you were playing yesterday and that surprised you, now, you know, I explained it. Uh, so you have all these drops, and then they also have access to a secondary table. Uh, so there's nothing that shows you the secondary table, but I'll show you now. So this is a look at the secondary table. You can get crystal keys, Pokemon cards, every tier of clue, including master, normal mystery boxes, elite mystery boxes, and then you can also get $5 bonds. So uh, if you're playing this game and you're not trying to spend any money in real life, which I totally understand, this is going to be a really good way to get a easy bond. I've already gotten one myself, and a handful of other people have already gotten some. Uh, there will be other ways, permanent ways in the future, but since this event is only temporary, this is currently the temporary way to get one. So, now that that's covered, once you have some Pokemon cards, you come over to Ash over here. And if you say, yes, I happen to have some, you're going to get a strange box. So let me spawn some more of these, and I'll show you what these look like. Alright, let's spam open a couple. So, you can see right off the bat, we got some Brudu Shields. Now, if you haven't noticed this event already, it's an homage to the very first event we had in Revival 1, which was also Jogers, and some of these items are similar. They were obtained similarly. Originally, the uh, shields were meant, like, on, on Revival 1, they were, like, hybrid shields, and they just weren't very good because they weren't even as, they weren't even better than Odium Ward or, or something like that. So, like, uh, and then obviously as the game progressed, or the, the server progressed, and old school progressed, more things came out that just made it even more obsolete. So I decided not to go that route this time. Uh, it's possible it still might end up obsolete, but, you know, with a shield, it's always going to be kind of like that way, unless you make it maximum strength bonus, which we didn't do. So uh, the, the magic one, there are all three different styles. The white one is magic. It is plus 35 magic defense, which is, if you... If you're familiar with magic defensive shields, that's very good for that. You have the range one, which is plus 75 range defense, which is more than a granite shield. So, I mean, this is like one of your best anti-range shields. People have been asking, where would you use these? And it's places where you really want to stay longer. So, like, Dagonoth Kings would be a good example. You're going to be getting hit from multiple styles. So, the magic one or the range one can make sense. Since you're probably going to be rocking Beehide, I would think that there's that. Um, there's also a nice prayer bonus. I mean, if you're praying too, you're going to get that advantage. And then it, it, the shields originally had a negative range bonus, but I removed that just so that you wouldn't have any negative reasons to not use these shields. And then the final one is the melee one, which is probably the worst one, just because if you're in melee, you probably want to use a strength bonus anyways. But uh, there's that. Um, as far as what they'll do in the future, it's possible, I don't know, maybe we can give them some special effect where they have some extra defensive bonus, but the main intention of them is that they're going to be defensive shields, so I understand that that's kind of niche, and it's not going to be crazy uh, important or crazy desired, but it's just, you know, it's just an item from this event, and that's kind of how all events will be. Events will be not, like, amazing in-game items, but they're going to be, you know, niche items that will hopefully have, you know, a couple uses here and there that would make sense and would make them... Desired. And then, of course, if you don't want them, just disassemble them for uber components. Uh, the Beads of the Dead are pretty similar. They disassemble for uber components as well. But they also have plus 35 prayer bonus. This is a really good prayer amulet. Anywhere you're going to want to stay long. If you, you know, pay attention to what I'm telling you, you want to stay long at locations, right? So these, these items will help you stay longer, right? Uh, there's... These things right here, which you saw we also just got a Brutus Shield. These are basically like mystery boxes. 
So these are like mystery boxes, basically. Uh, they have a lot of the junk items removed. And I know I said junk items, and we just got like four back to back junk items. So when I mean junk items, I mean those cosmetic items like the cow stuff, the bomber jackets, the menophyte, that stuff that's purely cosmetic, and even so most of it doesn't even disassemble at the moment. That stuff is removed. You can still get some quote unquote junk items, and there's still uh, the skilling stuff. The skilling stuff actually has a higher chance than the uh, normal mystery boxes. So if you're into skilling stuff, then this is a really good way to get it. Um, but another thing that's going to be good about these event good bags is in the future, they will always have the chance to give items from this event. So one of the issues we had on Revival 1 is all old event stuff was unobtainable uh, in future events. And we weren't really trying to make anything discontinued. Most of it was untradeable anyways. Most of it was cosmetics like pets and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it didn't really matter in that regard. So now with these event goodie bags, every single event moving forward, these will be a potential reward from them. And you'll uh, you'll have the chance to get all the Brudu shields again, the Beads of the Dead, as well as the pet. There is a pet. Let's see if we can get it. Nope, no pet rip. Uh, so there's one other item that's unique, but it's not really too fancy. It's uh, a teddy bear that you disassemble for rare components. That's another possible item you can get from the strange box. You can also get bond, pet, and I believe elite mystery boxes from those strange boxes. Let me see if I can... Uh, trash item. Let's see if we can't get anything interesting. Interesting? No, nothing. Oh, there's the teddy bear. It's, I mean, it's a rare chance to get anything from, to get anything fancy from these, but, you know. Uh, so that's basically how the event works. There was a couple other minor changes uh, in the update that I'll talk about now. So it is now possible to get the Omelette pet from Chambers of Xerix. The server that this uh, source is, that the source that we're using was called Kronos. And as far as I know, it only lasted for a couple months. Uh, but they, uh, they just sold pets. Yeah. I don't really know why. Uh, they had working chambers of Xerix, but it was not possible to get an omelet because they wanted to sell pet boxes and they put the omelet in the pet boxes. That's retarded to me, and we've we've remedied that. Uh, so there, that was that was also why the Phoenix pet wasn't in the Winter Tot crate was because they sell pets. So uh, yeah, we gotta fix that and remove all the instances of that. Uh, hopefully, I mean I've seen somebody call it Supreme Pet earlier, so I know a lot of. The boss pets are good. I know Rocky pet works, um, so I know a lot of those are good. But we, we gotta we gotta make sure every single pet exists uh, that should exist. So Omelet is in there. It is now a possible ward, and I think it, it metamorphosizes for me. But I don't know if that's because I'm an admin or or if it's just because it does that for everybody. Like what I'm saying is I'm not sure if you need something to do that. Like if you have to unlock that or if that's just a thing it does. I don't know. But uh, that's added as a possibility now. Also, the rare, the chance of rare items from Chambers of Zerk has been increased. Uh, really trying to get raids at a, at a rate where it's comfortable. I think the people who have done raids, I think I know of somebody who's done like 150 plus raids and has gotten like four loots, but they're all the, like the exact same loots. Like he, I think he, well, he's gotten like three duplicates. He just, I don't know. He just he hasn't been very lucky with it. And when he is lucky, it's very unlucky. And when I was looking at the code, I actually did notice that the scrolls are really boosted for some reason. I'm not sure if it's, how, if it's supposed to be that way on old school, where like the, the scrolls are just way more common than everything else. But that's the way it was. So I, I, I made a little bit of tweaks to that and made the chance of just getting a rare item in general better. Uh, lizard shamans are a lot less likely to spawn minions now. I, I made some changes to their code previously. And what ha ended up happening is it made it so that the spawn thing was way more frequently and... I fixed that now. Pest Control's activity score. It's activity score, not damage. Um, it, it's basically half your damage. So if you do 50 damage in one hit, you would get 25 activity score. It no longer decreases. That does kind of make it so you can AFK, but if you've done Pest Control on the server, you can't really afford to AFK. you got to help out or just the entire team isn't going to get points. You're not going to get points anyways, right? So... Uh, might as well help out. And then I've also made it so more. Um, you, you only need one person to do pest control. It's going to be really tough to do, but if you want to do it, it's now only only requires one person. A tool leprechaun was added to the Hasidious farming patch, and then Ruby donators got some buffs in this update. Uh, if you go to DZ, you have this NPC, and you can only use her if you're a Ruby donator, which is $100. So if you talk to her, she has this nice option where you can change your home location to the donator zone so you can change your home and respawn location if you if you make it this way you'll teleport here and then if you die you'll end up here and then there's a coffin over there you can see it um so that's nice uh obviously the home location yeah, like 
you know, this is gonna be a lot better, especially once the healer is improved and he can, you know, give you a little bit more healing, so to speak, so to say. And then she also has a shop that is uh, only available to $100 donators once again. Only has four items at the moment. These two right here are new in the update that was added today. But uh, yeah, so you know, just slowly trying to, ch you know, this this is basically the only thing that donators got in this update. I want to make sure donators get something every single update. That there's always some improvements, some buffs, something you guys get. And then I'll just talk about a couple of the event changes that were added in today. Uh, Jogers now give Slayer experience when you kill them. It's just a little bit of Slayer experience. It is double experience right now. It's double experience weekend. So I don't know if I mentioned that, but double experience weekend all weekend long. We're going to end it Tuesday since the event was a little bit delayed. I'm going to give you guys extra time. So Tuesday is when the double experience will actually end. Um, but yeah, if you want to get some free Slayer experience without needing a task, go kill some Jogers. Uh, and then I reduced and, and, and changed the rates of some of the items. The Elite Mystery Box, since it's more value than the Bond, I decided to make the Elite Mystery Box more rare than the $5 Bond. It made sense. And since I was making that more rare, I wasn't really trying to nerf the event, really. Like, I mean, it probably, you know, a little bit, but not, like, really. So I, I buffed the Bond rate just to make that a little bit better. So now you're, you're a little bit more likely to get the Bond, but less likely to get the Elite Mystery Box. Hopefully that'll balance out a little bit better. And then as I mentioned, the Herbs drops are now noted. Um, it it kind of cluttered the floor. Most people didn't loot them, and it was annoying. So I just kind of felt like, all right, well, if no one's going to loot them anyways, and it's going to clutter the floor, I might as well make it more manageable. That's kind of a thing I learned in my Bible 1, and I should have learned for this. I don't really want the floor to be spammed with a bunch of drops i also i also just think that code in general needs looking at some items stay on the floor for late way too long i understand the untradeables but it's like i logged in and i had grimy ranar still there and that didn't make any sense at all so <laughs> that needs to be changed um and then the last thing that was changed in today's update is the beads of the dead now disassemble for 25k components it was 50k which is way too many because it's not meant to be that rare or as rare as it was originally on revival one so it's been changed to 25k but it is a flat guaranteed 25k so at least there's that that's going to end it for the video thanks for watching hope you guys enjoyed there are going to be some more changes to the event more uh, more things coming more expansions and stuff like that so stay tuned next week next update